High score. Flutie looks for and sees a crack in the coverage. He fires to his roommate and favorite target, Gerard Phelan. A ground replay shows the accuracy and speed that was necessary for the pass to find its mark. Miami knots it up on its first possession of the second half and then takes a three-point lead before Kozar's attempt is picked off by Todd Russell. Kevin Snow's 28-yard field goal makes it 31-all by the end of the third quarter. Kozar tries to force one. Freshman linebacker Bill Romanowski comes up with it. Snow adds another three-pointer. Boston College 34-31. But Miami scores again. Flutie engineers another 80-yard drive. He goes to Phelan twice. A key third down reception keeps the drive alive. Finally, Strahan drives it across to reclaim a precarious lead. Less than four minutes. The drama of college football is no more apparent than in this final quarter. Bernie Kozar and the Hurricanes of Miami conjure up one more concerted effort, fighting the clock and the Eagle defense. They are a team with a common purpose. The pride of a national champion is on the line. Such a team won't give up. are directed toward the promised land that is called the end zone. The last few inches are taken airborne. 79 yards in 12 plays. To nearly all, the contest is decided. Ordinarily, such a drive would defuse any team spirit, but not the Eagles, and most of all, not Doug Flutie. Boston College football is about to experience its golden hour. He's got an amazing neck. He's the kind of guy that late in the game, he wants the ball in his hands. You see guys like that every now and then. He gives a team uh, the, the, the feeling that they're never out of anything. And, and he also, by example, we, we're never going to give up because he's going to keep battling you every second that he's out there. I think that's something that rubs off on other, other people on the team. They just feel like, hey, this thing is not over yet. We still got plenty of time. Let's stay after it. And I think that that's been a very important thing in our program. The miracle in Miami will join the lore of magical moments in college football for years to come. In an ending almost beyond belief, the Eagles of Boston College come forth victorious, sealing their invitation to meet the Houston Cougars in the Cotton Bowl.
I don't know what to say. <laughs> Okay, everybody, we need, we need one of these, okay? We got it, we got it! 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 We Tri-Captains Scott Harrington, Mark McDonald, and David Thomas gathered for the last coin toss of the regular season against traditional rival Holy Cross. Some were concerned the team's thoughts were on the game just passed or the bowl to come. Quickly removing any such fears, BC mounted a scoring threat on its first possession. Flutie hit Sean Dombrowski for a long game. A short toss to Troy Stradford in the backfield turned into an unscathed touchdown route. A second quarter turnover caused by Chuck Garecki gave the offense another opportunity. Steve Strahan gets the call. By intermission, it's a 17 to 10 game. The third quarter marks disaster for Holy Cross. Todd Russell pilfers a Crusader pass following a Stradford 45-yard touchdown effort. Then it's Flutie to Flutie for two touchdowns. The first through the air on a 30-yard touchdown strike. And then the second effort run to push the score to 38 to 10. Final 39-yard scoring pass to Kelvin Martin ends a typical three-touchdown, 276-yard day for Doug Flutie. Topping off a season of success, that night Flutie was officially announced the 50th winner of the Heisman Trophy. A preseason goal of the Boston College Eagles was to be playing on January 1st. The dream became reality when Boston College met the Houston Cougars in what many felt would be a super classic. While a national championship may not have been on the line, both teams were playing for the pride of their programs. 
and Boston College in particular was hungry for a bowl victory. Tradition has shown all America's and Heisman Trophy winners have performed well in Dallas. Doug Flutie's first half execution was disappointing to no one, except maybe some Cougar fans. His mid-period strike to Calvin Martin produced the game's first score on a 63-yard pass to Pater. The defense, led by MVP Bill Romanowski, number 53, came up with the big plays. Here, Mike Ruth recovered a Cougar fumble. Flutie wasted little time enjoying the protection offered him by his offensive line, dubbed the Secret Service, and delivered an on-target toss to Troy Stradford, giving the Eagles a 14-7 lead. In the second quarter, Flutie was again on the mark, this time combining with All-America wideout Gerard Phelan. Coupled with a Kevin Snow field goal, the Eagles hold a 17-point advantage. The unusual can and usually does happen in the big games. This Todd Russell interception proved to be a key play as it set up another Boston College scoring opportunity from the Houston 39. Six plays later, the familiar figure of Steve Strahan dove into the end zone for a 31-7 Eagle lead. While Houston did make a second-half comeback, the Eagles cemented their first bowl win since the days of Frank Leahy, bolstered by the 18-yard sweep of Troy Stratford. It is the end of the Doug Flutie era at Boston College. A multi-million dollar career with the USFL's New Jersey Generals awaits him. For Eagle fans, Boston College football has arrived. Flutie's legacy will be a program of promise to those who follow. Well, down the line, I think we've got a solid program now. I'm not saying we're a top 10 team every single year, but I think that we're a good football program with good athletes, and we've got good kids in the program, and football is important here now, and, it's, and there's a lot of excitement in the East and this part of the Northeast, and I, I see a lot of good things for us. The future of Boston College football is a rising star on the horizon. It, like the college itself, will continue in its efforts ever to excel.